Turning now to your community focus from truck tolls to proposed pay raises for cabinet members, Republicans have been sounding the alarm. Joining us now live in studio to discuss those issues and more, House Minority Leader Mike Chippendale. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Kim. So on the topic of truck tolls, local members of the GOP had been opposed to these from the start. Absolutely. The judge just ruled that they're unconstitutional. They've been turned off and the state is now deciding whether to appeal that ruling. Do you think the state is going to appeal? I think they would as a matter of course, yeah. I think that's probably the normal legal procedure uh, mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, you have to give it another try. Uh, I don't suspect the appeal will be successful, though. Yeah, and, and I mean, do you, do you think that the state should be appealing? Uh, y y yeah, I do, uh, just out of, out of principle, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you lose a case, if you lose a suit, you, you go back and you appeal it. I think that's just, again, normal, normal uh, pro forma for that kind of stuff, yeah. But you think it'll fail? I do. I, th I think the, the the ruling was sound. In fact, the ruling was precisely what my Republican colleagues and I had had pretty much called out for in 2016. That was going to happen. It was clearly, in our our opinion, our estimation, a violation of the Commerce Clause. And uh, as it turns out, that's precisely what the judge ruled. Is this an "I told you so" moment? I mean, I don't like to do those things, but it's uh, I informed you thusly sort of a moment. <laughs> yes. I want to talk about some um, something else that we've reported on. Governor McKee is calling for some pay raises for some of his cabinet yeah. members. You and Senate Minority Leader. Uh, Jessica De La Cruz are calling now for a special legislative session. Tell me why. Yeah, you, you know, Kim, we're out, it's campaign season, so we're out, we're, we're speaking with folks every day, and when we're talking to constituents and they hear this news, they're livid, they're irate, because the, the, the issues that folks are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis just don't relate to getting six-figure salaries increased by, by a double-digit percentage. People are concerned about how they're going to feed their families, how they're going to get their medicine, and how they're going to eat, I mean, how they're going to heat their houses. Um, they're, they're really not sympathetic to, to bigwigs getting, getting big raises. It's, it's the wrong time to do it, and we do think it does need to be addressed by the General Assembly and frankly stopped. Uh, the House Speaker and Senate President said in response to that call for a special session, we will be reviewing the salary adjustments approved after today, which is when we asked for the statement, after the administration refers them to the General Assembly. That's not a no to the special session. Mm -hmm. Do you think it will happen? Uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. <laughs> I try to be always hopeful. And, and in this case, I think it would be the right move for everybody involved to, to have us come back. And whether it, it, it passes or fails on a vote uh, is irrelevant, but that we have that vote, I think, is what's important. Uh, the PUC approved an energy rate hike last week, and Governor McKee says he'll be introducing a bill next session to temporarily suspend a 4% tax on people's electricity bills. Would you support that? Uh, yeah, of course. As a matter of fact, in, in, during the budget this year in June, uh, House Republicans put in two amendments uh, directly addressed at this. One was LIHEAP, the properly fund LIHEAP, uh, which is Low Income Heating and Energy Assistance Program, uh, which was underfunded. We felt it should have been more robustly funded, and we also felt that the 4% uh, gross receipts tax should have been eliminated. Those are two amendments we wrote. And of course, our Democratic colleagues did not pass them. They, they failed on the floor. And here we are now. We're not in session, and the governor's calling for them, and, and which would require us to come back and, and in an extraordinary session and do what we could have done in June and, uh, and avoided all of this. So absolutely, yeah, we, we support it. We, in fact, we, we came up with the idea, right? We, we, we were the ones who promoted it from the beginning. Um, I want to ask you a political question. Sure. We're just weeks away from the November general election, and today Target 12 reported that Republican gubernatorial candidate Ashley Kalis signed a mortgage document just earlier this year attesting that the house she has in Newport is her second home, not her primary residence. Do you think Rhode Islanders should be concerned that she doesn't have deep enough roots here to lead the state? I think Rhode Islanders will make that decision. I do get a, a, a kick out of uh, how there's so much focus on where where she's lived, where she does live, where she uh, where she uh, had had a, an exemption, and not, instead of the outstanding policies that she's offering. I think it's uh, it's wasted time to be talking about those things rather than focusing on the issues. I think that's more important for the voters, and that's what the people again that I speak with every day uh, on the campaign trail. That's what they want to know. They want to know what are the policy issues, not where was somebody's exemption or where was someone registered to vote. It's just, I, I think it's just foolish. And getting back to some policy issues, quickly before we let you go, we've got about 30 seconds. You just released your legislative wrap-up. What's the biggest highlight? Yeah, so, I mean, it, a lot of highlights, right? As Republicans, we're the minority, so we're the voice of the minority. We speak for the other side of the issue. Uh, we've had we had great successes, issues we've been pushing for years, tax uh, um, breaks, tax exemptions, whether it's uh, motorcycle trade-in value, whether it's uh, military pensions, whether it's um, personal retirement funds. All of these things are very important to us. Another issue that was very important to me was ensuring 
ensuring that children with disabilities are no longer discriminated against by Gina Raimondo's Rhode Island Promise Program, which they were, and the ACLU agreed with me on that, and I fought, and I fought very hard to ensure that the new law that was passed included children with disabilities so that they too could be afforded an opportunity to go to college. That's all the time that we have, House Minority Leader Mike Chippendale. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Kim.